Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out the Jazz Standard Blue Bossa. Now, if you haven't seen it already, I've got a lesson on my website about how to play that Bossa Nova rhythm. So you might want to go and check that out before you get stuck into this lesson, because it's quite important. I mean, in this lesson we're going to go through the chords and some of the bass movement sort of stuff, but really want to spend a little bit of time making sure you kind of got that Bossa Nova rhythm under your fingers before uh, you start tackling tunes, I reckon. So uh, let's get to a close-up and see how to play these chords. OK, let's start by having a look at the different chords in this song. So the first chord that we've got is a C minor 7. Normally played like this in a kind of a jazz thing, using your second and third fingers, but worth noting if you want to be doing the bossa nova with the kind of alternating bass between the root and the fifth, you probably want to use a first finger bar with your third finger on the tenth fret of the fifth string, so you can get that thing going on. Uh, the second chord is an F minor 7. That's the kind of the really straight way of playing it. Another nice way of doing it for this tune is to use this fingering, which is 8th fret, 6th fret, 8th fret, 9th fret, 2nd finger, 1st finger, 3rd finger, little finger. The nice thing about this is that you can lift up that 2nd finger to get a nice clear kind of bass movement. Also, if you drop little finger back 1 fret, you've got a really nice F minor 9. That'll be 8th fret, 6th fret, 8th fret, 8th fret. So that's a really nice version to have your the C minor going to the F minor 9. OK, then we've got a D minor 7 flat 5. Hopefully most of you know that. That's 5, 6, 5, 6. Next chord that we've got is a G7 sharp 5. Uh, sometimes written just G7, sometimes G7 sharp 5 sharp 9. Uh, I'd recommend just playing your G7 sharp 5 to start off with. Uh, there's two different fingerings that are kind of really good for this one. Uh, you can use all four fingers. First finger on the third fret of the, th the sixth string. Second finger, third fret of the fourth string. Third finger, fourth fret of the third string. And little finger underneath on the fourth fret of the second string. It's a really nice little grip for that, again, because you can get a... You can move your first finger over here to play a different bass note that leads nicely to the next chord, which is C minor 7. Uh, the alternative is to play it using a bar with your first finger and your second finger in the fourth fret of the third string and third finger, fourth fret of the second string. It doesn't really matter which one of those fingerings you... you know, whatever feels comfortable for you. Uh, and then we're going to a C minor or a C minor 7. The next chord we got is an E flat minor 7. So same shape, just moving it up to the 6th fret, to an A flat 7, to a D flat major 7. Again, a really nice kind of little variation on that that I've heard a few times is the uh, E flat minor 7 to A flat 13. Uh, now, a good variation again, a13, very often played like that. If you're going to do the bossa nova thing, using your second and fourth fingers there, so your third finger is free to be playing that fifth. That kind of thing. So that would be fourth fret, sixth fret, fourth fret, fifth fret, sixth fret, and then it would be uh, fourth fret again, but we're not playing the thinner string at this uh, uh, this particular version or this stage. So you can use that A13 if you like. And if you're going to do that, a nice uh, other substitute instead of the D flat major 7 is to play a D flat major 9, uh, which is 4th fret, 3rd fret, 5th fret, 4th fret. Again, it's nice for the bass movement. The other nice thing about it is if you play a D flat major 7 like this, the, uh, the D minor 7 flat 5 is exactly the same but with the bass note moved up a semitone, which can be really good or it can sound a little bit boring depending on uh, what it is you're kind of looking for with that, uh, that part of the tune. So uh, we're at that D minor 7 flat 5, back to our G7, sharp 5, and back to C minor, and then just a half a bar of D minor 7 flat 5 to G7 sharp 5 is the little turnaround. So now let's put that into uh, context and put it into time. Now uh, I'm going to keep the bass movement just static, so just staying on the one on the root note. I'm not going to have it moving uh, for this first little playthrough. I'll come back and talk about the bass movements in a second. So we're starting off with a C minor 7 for two bars to an F minor 7 to 
a D minor 7 flat 5, G7 sharp 5 to C minor 7. Now I've just noticed there's something on the D half diminished or D minor 7 flat 5 to the G7. I'm actually changing the G7 half a beat early. So I'm going 1, 2, 3, and 4, and. So it's actually changing on the and after 4, not on beat 1. Again, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 1. Okay? It's really important that you get that on, a, on the, most of the boss of tunes when you've got the chords that are only one bar each. It's going to change there on the and after 4. One more time. So 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 1, and 2, and 3, 4. Okay, that's how that uh, rhythm would fit with that. And then we're on C minor for two bars. Then we're going to E flat minor 7. A flat 7 to D flat major 7 for two bars. To D half diminished. G7 sharp 5 to C minor. Again, we've got that little movement there at the end going from the C minor. 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 1, and 2, and 3, 4. Okay, it's important to get those kind of grooves right. 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 1, and 2, and 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 1, and 2, and 3, 4. Might take you a little bit of practice to get that one under your fingers. Just take it nice and slow. Again, writing the rhythm out can be really helpful for you if you are struggling to see where those uh, chords will be changing. They're just what's called pushed, so moved a semitone. Uh, <laughs> I keep saying semitone, a quaver early, a, a half a beat early. So uh, let's go through now and look at the alternating bass. So if we're starting with the C minor seven. The, ba the alternating bass part will just be here with the third finger on the tenth fret of the fifth string. So on the F minor seven, or depending on if you want to play F minor seven or F minor nine. When it comes to the D half diminished or the D minor seven flat five, we move our bass note a tritone. So we're moving it from the D over to the A flat which just happens to work really nice going to the G7 to get that bass movement going, the A flat, the G, and then we actually take it to the note B, which leads nicely to the C. So check this out from the D minor 7 flat 5, A flat bass note, G7 sharp 5, B bass note to C minor 7. E flat minor 7. Again, obvious kind of uh, movement of the bass. A flat 7, or A flat 13 if you're going to do that one, to D flat major 7. Remember the alternative there was the D flat major 9. If you want to put that one in, same thing, just moving the bass between the root and the fifth. Then we've got our little D turn around with the A flat. And the B leading to the C minor. As I mentioned earlier, I think it's a really, really good idea to spend a bit of time getting that bossa nova pattern under your fingers before you apply it to tunes, especially when the chords start changing and you're pushing some of the chords. If your hand's kind of used to it and you've got kind of muscle memory of how that pattern goes, you will find it a hell of a lot easier. So I would, you know, that, that's really the key there. Uh, the other thing to do is, of course, be playing it slowly. Uh, you know, if you're trying to play it really fast, you're going to get yourself in a tangle and you're going to get yourself out of time. And it really, these kind of tunes, in fact, all music really is all about time. So if your time's a bit sloppy, then your playing's going to sound not so good. You know, you're much better off playing it nice and slow and really working on making your time good and making it feel good, because that's really what's going to make it kind of, you know, be right. That'll, that'll be what people want to hear and what people want to jam with you. You know, they want you to be playing solid rhythm while they're having a solo, not being all over the place and missing beats and getting it a bit wobbly. So you really want to be 
concentrating on your time and making sure your rhythm parts are really solid before you go getting into anything more complicated. Um, of course, with these sort of boss of tunes, all of the same chord substitutions apply. So after you've got the basic kind of thing down, you might want to start looking at some other chord extensions and other chord movements. Uh, it's lots of fun, a little bit more challenging if you're trying to keep that bass thing going on at the same time, but uh, it's really good fun, you know. So, uh, Hope that helps you learn Blue Bossa, and I uh, hope you join me for the lesson on playing the melody and uh, harmonic analysis if you want a headache. Uh, see you very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.